Hello, today we're here for the Women in STEM panel. I'm Lily Dedman and I'm the Kent Union's Women's Officer. To begin with, we'll be showing a short video with women lecturers in STEM about what it is like to be a woman in STEM. Enjoy. Well, I think since... Because I enjoy maths, I'll study that at university and I'll see what happens. I suppose I've always been interested in what happens in society. Once I started looking into some of these topics, it was just an obvious choice to look quantitative methods and data, quantitative data. Numbers matter. So politicians, I used to work in, in government, I used to work in a voluntary sector, and they question off who are the winners, who are the losers. Numbers, um, as well as stories, but numbers matter a lot. And also, I was very, very good at math when I was in secondary school, so that was a natural kind of a option for me to go into this. Yes, um, I've had two periods of maternity leave and it's very challenging coming back to a full-time academic job. There's been a really big controversy in psychology where especially male academics have been very kind of um, abusive towards certain people in terms of the detailed specifics about the, the ways they've ran their method. Well, when I started my PhD, it was, was a bit of a different world. There, yeah, there are times where it's, we're still not quite there to get women as confident as men. Now it's put it down to being young at the time. Now that I'm not young anymore, <laughs> I'm thinking maybe it actually wasn't. The room breakdown for a lecture or a seminar would really be 20% female and 80% male. You are in a male-dominated area. Um, I'm not surprised because um, I've been very interested in the uh, gender inequalities issue within Kent. It's clearly not good, and if you know if this is the case, uh, I imagine uh, we should take measures to revert the situation as soon as possible. The sciences have <laughs> been quite bad in the sense that I think in one department there are more professors called Peter than uh, women. But having female professors and having women represented in very high level faculty is incredibly important because of the role modeling we show. And I think what you guys are doing is exactly that. When I started my PhD, I was interested in uh, digital media. I managed to publish one of the very few. Um, still very few, but, um, but also one of the very first articles with the title online. My work has been used by some of the committees that were really pushing these policy agendas forward, so which is, which is incredible because it's a policy that will impact millions of people. During the third year students who've been on placements, they have just totally flourished and become much more confident. So in 2014, um, I published a first author book. Um, and so all the things we've been telling them for two years, they're now experiencing themselves, they're shaping workplaces around them. That I'm really proud of and excited about. Getting the book out and having some really positive reviews of it and having colleagues and students tell me how useful they found it, um, that was probably one of my proudest achievements. I think what people don't realise is how much social conditioning we are under. You know, we are conditioned at a, at a very young age, even perhaps even before birth, about what being a girl is or what being a boy is. And a lot of the science areas are something that are, even at a very young age, being pushed towards boys in terms of the toys that they're given, some of the role models that they're given where it isn't something that girls are encouraged to do. I think generally, we're, particularly Britain is such a gendered society, you have two young children and they already they drive me mad. They go, I don't like girls, I don't want any girls to come to my birthday and I you know, usually lose it at that point. I think really we just need to showcase women and show that women can succeed in these disciplines. I, I don't think that, they, that women should self-censor themselves. Be confident, you are the kind of the vessel for change. And enjoy it, for one. If that's what you like, do it. Do what you like, try to do it uh, to the best of your knowledge, to the best of your capacity, with, with, with the best passion you, you can invest. Yeah, don't be put off by the fact that there are going to be more men around you. Just don't worry about your gender. <laughs> Go do it, be confident. You're awesome.
So would you like to all introduce yourselves? My name is Tana uh, and I study chemistry. I'm in my second year. My name is Ersa and I study postgraduate statistics with finance. My name's Halima and I study maths. I'm Stephanie, I'm in my third year of biomedical science. I'm Nicola and I'm in my last year of forensic science. Okay. Uh, so what did you think about the messages in the video? Um, they were very encouraging. Um, I definitely think, like, I mean, I know one of the lecturers in the video, um, and she is very encouraging for myself. Um, so, yeah, I think the messages that were given in the video are very encouraging and kind of has helped me, kind of, because at, at the moment I've kind of been feeling like I don't know if I definitely want to go into the STEM industry in the future or go into law um, and kind of convert into law. <clears throat> but um, I've kind of thought about it and like I think that's helped me kind of go, yeah, maybe I should just go into the STEM industry as well. Um, but yeah. As you just said that they were really encouraging, the, all, all those in fact, and it's good to see some people, like professionals in, in such a, an established state in STEM and pursuing STEM careers. And like one of the lecturers, she said that, be confident. That's one thing I would take away as a kind of learning or lesson for this with the videos. Yeah. So it says that we have a future in STEM. So we look forward to that. Thank you. Um, yeah, they were encouraging. <laughs> um, it was, I think it's also nice hearing from women in the STEM industry because it, it is like really relatable um, and it does make so much of like, sorry, <laughs> it does make a lot of difference. Um, it was also quite sad hearing that there are, was it more professors, was it professor? Peter. called Peter, <laughs> than women, um, which is like absolutely ridiculous and there is no reason um, like for that to happen because like women can do as well as men can do in the same industry. It's just the, it's just being encouraged because men are given so much more of an opportunity and they're encouraged a lot more, whereas women are put down when it comes to stuff like that. Yeah, I think it was a really encouraging message. I think especially seeing the, the, the struggles that they've talked about, um, like maternity leave, the fact that they've said that they have gone on maternity leave and have come back to work and have been successful at the, that transition, um, really encouraging to show that women can do well in the STEM subject, yeah. And I agree, I think it's nice to see such a range of subjects that was covered in the video as well, like they were all from different fields in STEM. Mm -hmm. I think that was really nice rather than just like one specific area and how um, even if they have experienced troubles and discriminations and things that they've still managed to publish their own papers and books and that we can do it no matter what. It doesn't matter what the men say. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so why did you choose to study your subjects? Um, well, ever since the beginning of secondary school and kind of going through secondary school, I realized, I didn't actually realize but I was pretty good at chemistry. But then it hit sixth form, and then I looked back into my secondary school life, and then I realised I was good at chemistry, and kind of went, actually, this is the subject for me. I was going to go into medicine, actually, um, and realised I was really, really bad at biology, so this wasn't going to happen. <laughs> so I stuck to chemistry, and that's why I'm doing chemistry. Mm, I did my undergrad in economics, and then I got a chance to work in a bank and where I realized that my interest lies in finance. So before pursuing a career in finance, I realized that corporate world isn't made for me, so should I, I should switch my fields and switch to academia instead. So before starting an academic research, I should have some strong quantitative skills for which I applied to Kent, and that's why I'm studying statistics with finance. That's pretty much it. Um, throughout school, I have always actually just enjoyed maths. But um, I did also want to do medicine initially and then I got to A-level and realised that I hated chemistry because it was actually really hard. <laughs> um, so then I was like, oh, I'll just do maths. That was literally it. So. Um, 
I'm a bit, a bit the same to be honest. School, I really enjoyed science and maths. Um, my mum's a nurse, so medicine was kind of like the route I wanted to take, but I didn't really like the first prospect of seven years <laughs> to become a doctor, so I was like, uh, I'll do the lab side of it instead, so biomedical science, that's the route I took. Again, pretty similar. Um, <laughs> I was I always, always pretty good at chemistry, but I never really wanted to do it as like a pure subject. So forensics is a lot more of the applied and it's using the techniques in like physical and to actually do something, I want to say useful because obviously <laughs> chemistry is useful, but <laughs> something a bit more um, <clears throat> applied and forensics is that and it's wider range than chemistry as well. So it's biology and physics. So it's just like more interesting. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you yeah, to twice. I know. <laughs> um, so were you encouraged to do uh, your STEM subjects or were there challenges? Hmm. Um, my chemistry teacher in secondary school said to me I should never even think about doing chemistry, or well, never even think about doing medicine, never mind chemistry, um, and that I should go into a complete different field. Um, because science wasn't for me, proved her wrong. Um, <laughs> however, my parents were very encouraging. Um, it doesn't matter what scientific subject I was going to be doing, um, and they kind of helped me out throughout the long way. But who really encouraged me? Yes, my parents, but my chemistry teacher in sixth form, who really wanted uh, me to do chemistry because I was doing well at that time, and said to me, that is the subject for me. Um, in fact, majority, apart from one person who did medical, uh, sorry, um, mechanical engineering, all of them went on to university to do chemistry. So everyone was really inspired to do chemistry, yeah. My biggest challenge was my own mind because I thought I wasn't good at math, so how would I do that? And my economics degree was more of a theory-based rather than quantitative one. And secondly, moving from job to leaving job, in fact, that was paying me well and I had a chance of promotion as well. So it was hard. Like, that was one of the challenges, but yeah, it's, it's turning out to be a really good decision at the end. Um, I was mainly encouraged from my parents because um, they both have quite strong backgrounds in maths and chemistry. So like growing up, it's always kind of just been a thing that like I just knew. Um, with school though, it was kind of weird because all the teachers, like I went to I went to an all girls school, so you'd think that they'd encourage you to do STEM subjects, but it was literally just the teachers that did STEM subjects, and every other teacher would be like, oh, like maybe try something else. Um, even with applying at A levels, um, like some of my friends were told, like don't apply to medicine or don't apply to chemistry or maths because you're going to be up against other people who've gone to like private schools and like they know what they're doing and like yeah basically discourage them but they all like still applied and still got through to doing it um but yeah it was mainly my parents and teachers in that doing who taught stem subjects yeah i think again the same um, my parents were very supportive. They both came from backgrounds within the STEM subjects. Um, and I think secondary school was the, the most supportive. I was actually made like a science leader in my final year. So I got um, to, to see behind, almost behind the scenes of what the teachers would do and get extra little snippets of stuff, which really helped me want to do the career I wanted to do, I'm going to do. So um, yeah, lots of support, I think, yeah. I think so. Um, I had a great chemistry teacher at GCSE. Like, she was my absolute favorite teacher. Um, she was also crazy, and <laughs> probably why I decided to carry on science was because of her, because she was so, in. like there were only six girls in our science class, and we, w we were clearly very outnumbered. So she always made sure to give us a little bit more attention. And then when I moved on to A-level, um, I moved to an all-girls school, so it was quite a change to go from six girls to 30 girls in a chemistry class. Um, but my chemistry teacher, um, again, I got, a really, I got two amazing women for my science A-levels, and they were head of year, so they were very much... Our school was very much like, everyone should do STEM. And so actually it kind of excluded the people who didn't want to do STEM. Um, 
which is a bit rare, I would say, to be honest. But no, um, and neither of my parents are that STEM related, but they were very much just like, do it because it interests you, so. Okay. Uh, so what do you think about the whole Athena's One issue? Um, yeah, I mean, I have noticed within the department in, um, in, in my department, um, there is a lack of women lecturers and, you know, readers, etc., professors. Um, and it kind of gets worse the higher and higher up. Um, I don't know what you call them, like, I don't want to call them ranks as such, but, you know, higher and higher up you go. So there's less readers and there's much less professors and there's more, it's more male dominated, basically. Um, so I can see why they m have been warned. Um, I don't think it's good enough. It doesn't help uh, women students at all because um, what it means is that there's less representation for us. So we kind of, we don't feel like we're being represented and therefore it's less encouraging for us to see that. Um, but again, from the video, it's encouraging to get those messages from the women lecturers who are present at the moment. But again, it's really bad that um, there isn't enough. As the video, one of the lecturers said that there are more Peters than women students. It's kind of, it explains that it's, <laughs> you're applying for Athena Swan and it kind of explains why we cannot qualify and why Kent would not be able to retain his bronze award, which I think, uh, I think they have it right now. But uh, we, because I rep, I'm a school rep and we had a discussion with one of the legs, with uh, I, think, I think a staff kind of, a com we had a committee meeting in fact, with a number of staff members. And we discussed this as seen as one issue and we do, um, uh, the mathematics department, it's planning to increase women representation, especially when it comes to postgraduate applications for PhDs and masters, because we do have very little applications from females as compared to males. So that is one, one of the ki kind of, uh, what do you call it, one of the plans for them uh, f that they have, they're considering at this moment to apply or implement so that they may, so that they're seen as one issue can be resolved, if it makes sense. Yeah, I know that they're also like they're do, they're trying to do more in the maths department to include more women. Um, I know they've got programs where they bring in, well, they've got some more women coming in that are working in the maths industry um, to talk to women who are studying as well and like help them and tell them, oh, this is like what like this is the approach to go towards like it's how you can go into this industry is working. Um, yeah, it's like, it's terrible how little women are there. Um, I remember looking around my lecture one day just to see how many women there were and being like, oh, it's not that bad, but also just realising that it's because all the women were, like, near me. And then looking around and it is, like, mainly guys. Um, but, yeah, representation is really important because it does make you feel like you actually kind of belong there, if that makes sense. And personally, I feel like it's easier to approach women as lecturers than it is to men because they just seem like they get it. Like you can tell that they get it so much more than the men do. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I think I've been doing, I've, I'm in my third year and I think I can count amount of women lecturers I've had on one hand, which is quite shocking. Um, we've had guest lecturers and stuff like that um, as well, which are women, but core lecturers in the biosciences, there's, there's honestly not a lot. Um, in terms of uh, students, it's about 50-50, I think. It's better now, and we have demonstrators in the lab, and um, I think they're about 50-50. There are more women, younger women, um, coming into it than there are lecturers currently. But um, we need role models. That's, that's the main thing. Um, it's nice to have uh, lecturers that you can um, talk to. And I think the two subjects I like most this year um, have been taught by women. And I don't know whether that's because it's the women that have taught it or it's the subject that I really like. I think the women definitely have had an impact on that. So um, we definitely need to improve, for sure, for sure. I, I do think it's disappointing that Kent probably won't get the award um, this year. 
<clears throat> but I can kind of see why, as everyone else has said, there aren't as many female lecturers as there should be. Um, in our in our forensics labs, we're actually quite lucky that our uh, one of our main lab technicians is a woman, and she has come from industry. She used to be a fingerprint analyst, and she has she is, has been so invaluable to all of us in the department because whenever we feel like we have questions about the course or about people wanting to go into forensics as a field, we can go to someone who has had first-hand experience. Um, and without her, then I think nobody would be would feel okay to ask the men these questions because she can offer us an, a side of a view that they just can't. So I think having her around is good, but it's it's not really enough. One woman in the department's not really enough. <laughs> Um, so how does having a lack of diversity impact you as students? Um, well, I feel less represented, really. Um, and kind of, it's discouraging. I feel less represented. Um, I think it's, I didn't mention this before, but I think it's the attitude as well within the department. Um, towards women and I've noticed that it's pretty disgraceful really um, kind of and I can kind of see why there are less women as representatives as you know as lecturers etc because of the attitude towards towards us really um, which is the things that you hear during lab sessions during more in lab sessions because you're directly speaking with um demonstrators etc um than in lecturers but yeah it i can kind of see why um there is the lack of diversity and also it is really discouraging so yeah i'm an international student so i do value i i do seek in fact diversity and having a diverse set of people around is something it's going to help students like me come from all, all the way from their countries, home countries, to settle in abroad. And um, I would have a different take in this because if I see my lecturers, despite the fact that they're usually male, but they do have different backgrounds. They come from different nationalities. So in that sense, there is diversity. So it's not just British people, British lecturers teaching us. It's kind of, I have lecturers from China, I have lecturers from Greece, so different people with different dialects and different teaching styles, different brains. I think it has helped me out, like having lecturers from different nationalities with different mindsets. So as a person, I think it, it helps you grow. Again, and the students in my class, they are from different nationalities as well. So there are like only three, three natives, UK natives, and some Europeans and some from, again, South Asia, some from Africa. So it's a good thing. I, I, like, I like diversity. It, it has helped me out. <laughs> um, yeah, like it is quite um, culturally diverse, which is good. Um, but yeah, it will be good to have more women as well. And um, yeah, diversity, just it just makes it easier to feel like you belong somewhere if you get what i mean but because if there's absolutely like no representation for you when you're in an in, in if there's no representation for you when you're somewhere you kind of get that slight disconnect and it is it does affect your studies as well because it's like oh you have other things that you're thinking of whereas if you feel like other people there are like you then it's kind of easier to just focus on what you're there for um yeah, and even with the lecturers, it is e also easier to go to lecturers that you feel comfortable with. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, in terms of diversity, um, out of the group of friends that I have, I'm the only white person there. So diversity is fine. I'm really happy with the diversity. But um, in terms of women, yeah, I associate obviously more with women because I am one. But all of my friends are women. And I feel more comfortable talking to women lecturers, asking for help and stuff. So sometimes mm. I would sit and struggle um, rather than talking to certain lecturers because I'm a bit intimidated by them. So I feel like having women there, um, it just eases it and makes it more comfortable, um, which obviously will help my 
um, my progress within the STEM area. So yeah, I think we definitely need more women in STEM, but diversity itself, I think we're, we're doing really well in Kent, yeah. I think I was just having a think about it, and this year, uh, all of my lecturers have been white men from England, um, save for one who was from Australia. Um, <laughs> And I had a woman lecturer for one topic, and after finishing her topic, she actually left the university. Um, so we're down to none on our course now for lecturers, um, for forensic lecturers. So it, as Steph said, it's difficult if you feel like you can't talk to the men. If I feel like if I went to ask some of these people questions about what we were studying if I don't understand what they've been talking about I feel more intimidated going to see them than I would with a woman um, and having no women now does make it slightly more intimidating to go and ask the questions and get the help yeah. I think if we had more women lecturers then we would feel more comfortable to go and ask the questions and get the help that we yeah. we I need think, I think the men um, I mean they seem intimidating but when you go and ask them they're fine like they're not we're not yeah. we're not being mean on them at all they're all everyone's really friendly and stuff but it just just plucking up the courage to go and ask it's just easier if it's a woman i don't know why but it, you know, there's just something there it's, they're all fine they're all really nice <laughs> people, people. <laughs> we're not being, we're not hating on them but it's just it's just a lot easier with women i don't know um so have you ever experienced any sexism about you studying a stem subject definitely Definitely, uh, I think I mentioned this before slightly, but um, so I, when I am in labs uh, numerous times, I have got heard comments around me, um, not by the students, but by the demonstrators and by the technicians, which is even worse. Um, things like, oh, women shouldn't be in STEM, they shouldn't be in STEM subjects, I don't know why they're going into these subjects. Um, I've heard things like, oh, shouldn't you be in fashion? Um, I mean, I've never really looked at my fashion, to be honest, but there you go. Um, but yeah, I've, I've got that quite a bit. Um, and things like, oh, you know, um, why are women going into STEM? What is the point of them doing that? Um, they should be at home, I've heard once. Thank you very much. I shouldn't be at home. I'm very happy in the lab. Um, but yeah, definitely have heard that several times. The attitude, I have reported it as well, so there is that. Um, but it so has gone down ever since I reported it, which is good, um, but it's still there. Um, and and it still does happen, and I think it's a real shame, and it does make sense into why there are less women lecturers, and therefore why people feel more discouraged, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. At the end of the day, it's all like a, a chain, really, a vicious cycle, kind of comes back to each other. Um, yeah, I think people need to kind of really need to change their mindset sometimes. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I think people seriously need to think change their mindset and think about the way they talk not only just not just don't say it but really kind of understand it's a, it's a developing world we should be moving on we shouldn't be still in the ide ideology that women should be in the kitchen it, it's a lot more than that now you know um women should be in labs women should be you know doing mathematics equations and all sorts of things we've been doing that for years already i don't see why we shouldn't be doing that now so the fact that i still hear this today is quite upsetting definitely as far as sexism is concerned i don't think i have ever encountered any such instance since my study over here because all of us students, all the classes that I take, the students are they're mature enough not to talk about such stuff, and not even the staff members. But one point, one thing is that like my program is more programming intensive, computer programming, language, etc. And I see that guys they see excel in that, 
they, they understand the programming bit e much more f fastly as compared to that of like females. So if there are seven females and there are eight guys in the class, the eight guys would know the, what the lecturer is saying and they would come do that uh, programming assessment much easier than we would do. Like, we would struggle a bit. So I think, I don't know, probably we have not been, guys usually, uh, they do have like, I don't know, please cut this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like, guys are good with co computer programming because it's from their early childhood, they're exposed to gadgets and stuff, while women, on the other hand, are, they don't, they don't get that exposure, maybe. That's why our brains are not that, they're wired not, in, in not to um, accept such information that, or process that computer information that quickly, as guys would do, if that makes sense. Thank you. Um. Sexism, it's moany, moany, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, with sexism, it's mainly uh, people being shocked if I tell them that I do maths. And what comes down to it, like a lot of the time when I do ask, it's like, oh, you're quite like creative or like you're quite feminine. Like I didn't, I wouldn't expect you to do a subject like that, which is really stupid because it is just saying like, oh, if you are a woman doing maths, the only thing you can be good at is maths, like you can't have any other interests, you can't be any sort of way, but it's it's just really ridiculous that people can't accept that you can be good at more than one thing as well, like you don't have to be, there isn't this ideal one type of woman that can do a STEM subject, It like uh, women can do it, it doesn't matter where, what your background is, what other interests you have, like it's irrelevant. Um, guys can be complex, so like, why can't women? Um, other sexism is probably just, it's just that condescending behavior, like guys kind of like making you feel stupid. And it, like, it doesn't matter that you get the same grades as them or like you, you're doing better than them. At the end of the day, you're not a man. So like, yeah, you, you're, you're just stupid, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, personally, I've not really uh, seen sexism in my STEM like, career. Um, but I think there's always been like a certain stigma of, you know, when girls are young, they get dolls and boys get cars. So there's always that sort of, um, they should go into different career types. And um, especially I think secondary school age, I used to play football. And the only reason we stopped was because all the girls didn't want to play it anymore because it was too boyish. And I think because there's that stigma there, people are, are don't go into in STEM. Women don't go into STEM because they think society didn't want them to. And there's you know girls should do nursing or something like this, and boys should be engineers and all that. But we can do whatever we want now. So <laughs> yeah. Um, but personally, I'm lucky enough not to have experienced that um, specifically. But obviously, there's that general stigma that's always still there that needs to disappear. I agree. I think the only time that I can ever remember having anything said about me being in STEM was in secondary school. And because there were seven of us in our chemistry class of, I think it was 35 people, there were seven, seven girls and the rest were boys. So there was always that thing that maybe we shouldn't be there. But since then, I think it's been all right. Like, if people do say anything, I probably just ignore it. But it it probably is still being said. I'm just not paying attention because I don't see why I should let them dictate my path and my education just because they don't like it or they don't think that we're capable. Um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, so how do you envisage your future as a woman in STEM? Um, it's going to be difficult, definitely. I am expecting more comments. Um, like I've heard, I mean, if starting off already in the labs, you know, I'm expecting more comments. I won't be surprised. But um, I think I definitely would power through it and hopefully have a... Uh, a good career in in the STEM industry, really, yeah. Because I want to pursue a career in academia, I think I need to be more committed to studies rather than anything else. So I might have to 
I don't know, it'll be a, it'll be a challenge. It'll be very challenging managing personal life together with um, the studies because PhD, it, it requires a lot of commitment and time and you do have to kind of leave a lot of things aside, especially when it comes to household and stuff. So as she, uh, one of the lecturers just said in the videos that we need to be confident, we need to give up everything because it, if it needs, right? And, it, and if it's my passion, because it's my passion, in fact. So I think it would be hard, it would be challenging to pursue a career, especially in STEM subjects. Yeah, it'll, it'll probably be quite hard. <laughs> but um, at the same time, like most of the women in my family, they all have done like medicine or like maths or just like a STEM subject, basically. Um, but I've always been raised in a way that it does like, regardless of your gender, it doesn't really matter. Um, like you still have to like pursue the career that you want. So yeah, that's kind of my outlook on it. Yeah, I think there's always gonna be some pushback um, wherever you go, but personally I definitely wanna stay in STEM. I'm hoping to go into cancer research. So hopefully that will work out. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I know that there'll be some pushback, but I'm ready for that. Um, and obviously the balance between having a family and working, I think all women have got to go through that maternity leave wise, but I think it's a lot easier now that um, men are coming to the realization that they can be stay at home dads rather than the women. So that's nicer. <laughs> uh, I'm not expecting too much of a worry, to be honest, because I don't plan on staying in lab work. Um, not because of the environment itself, just because I don't like it. Um, <laughs> I just don't find it interesting, so I'm looking at becoming a, a teacher. So the people and the schools that I've spoken to about going into teacher training, there's actually been, it's always been the very positive, like, oh, you're a woman, you want to teach STEM, then you're going to get the job and you'll get the bursary and you'll get everything you want. So it's not going to be an issue, but like knowing that I might end up being the token woman in a science department yeah. is a little bit... That, yeah, that one that. woman, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you know. So this is the last question from me. Which woman inspires you the most and why? Um, the one, woman who inspired me, like, does it have to be a famous person or like, could it be just anyone? Um, it's actually my mum. She's a nurse. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> she's a nurse. Um... So she is in the medical field. Um, when I was going to go into medicine, she also inspired me to go into chemistry as well, because I was like, well, you know, it's still a scientific subject, um, obviously. Um, you know where I'm going with this one. So yeah, she's definitely been my inspiration. Um, also, in terms of famous person, definitely has to be um, Kalpana Ch uh, Chaw. Chow Lam, who is the first woman of Indian origin to go into space. Um, and she, you know, she was a fantastic inspiration for myself. Um, so yeah, definitely um, both of them. As you just said, most inspiring women for any child is the mother. My mom is the first, she's the most inspiring women for me. But when it comes to career in finance or career in STEM, this master is like, she is the woman whom I look forward to. And she's the youngest, um, she's the youngest, she, she got into Morgan Stanley and she make, m became the managing director at the age of 28. And uh, at the age of 40, or 48 right now, she's m managing her own company, Digital Assets Corporation. And she's, a, she's the mind behind those credit default swaps, so she's good with option, uh, with the derivative pricing and stuff. She's a, she's a, she has a good name in finance. She's my inspiration. Thank you. I'm also going to say my mum. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, yeah, honestly, because she is, like, she's always encouraged me to pursue, like, whatever I want to do, and there's never been that, like, idea that you're going to be held back because of your gender and I have like watched her do it and like she is she's a pharmacist um, 
and she's managed to like manage her career like she's good at what she does and also like a family she's also quite family orientated and there hasn't really been much of a problem um even when she was having my brother she didn't leave work until like i think it was the day before he was born <laughs> yeah she's she's quite she's really strong she's a really strong woman she's like the strongest person i know um i'd also say like maybe my secondary school physics teachers um there were two of them they were both women one of them um taught me from year seven to gcse <laughs> bless you <laughs> one of them taught me from year seven to GCSE and she was just like this really cool lady who just did so much and then after everything she did I think she worked for NASA she worked in like Russia um, she worked in Amsterdam for a bit she did like a lot of research and then after she was like oh I'll just do some teaching and she always taught us like just to do like whatever you want like it honestly doesn't matter and also being in a girls school there wasn't that competitiveness with boys if that makes sense um but yeah and my other physics teacher was the one I had for AS and there were only four of us in the class but she would like literally push us like so much to do something in STEM just being like look you are smart and like you can do this so you might as well do it um she'd always take us to trips and stuff and just like show us like other cool ladies <laughs> in stem um just to encourage us but yeah yeah um i mean everyone's gonna say mum right <laughs> uh how can you not like my mum's a nurse uh she's so strong she um she's had cancer twice which is one of the reasons i wanted to go into cancer she worked whilst having radiotherapy she's that strong she's just an amazing person so i mean obviously you've got to look up to those people um i never really thought of gender as being an issue as a kid and i think that's because of my parents they've never i'm one of four two boys two girls we've all had the same um upbringing we've all been given the same opportunities so i've never had that issue um in terms of famous historical people um I would say Mary Seacole. She's, um, I came across her when we were learning about Florence Nightingale at school. And she's basically this um, black Jamaican woman who uh, became a nurse through her mum. She wanted to help in the Crimea War. She went to London, asked if she could be part of um, Florence Nightingale's team, was rejected because um, of her race. So instead she paid for herself to go to the Crimea War set up this base, helped the soldiers with food, helped the wounded, um, bankrupt herself because she wanted to help these people so much, um, came back to London and they all raised money for her because she did this amazing thing. And the fact that she didn't give up is why she's so inspiring because, I mean, if she can do that back then, and, and she was like a black Jamaican woman, anyone could do anything now, so, yeah. I shall continue the trend. <laughs> My mum has always been great. She, but, I mean, she never really did well in school herself. Um, she's doing a degree now. Um, she's gone back to do a degree now in um, environmental sciences. So she is doing things now because she, she finds it interesting. But she always just told us to do whatever we wanted and to carry through studying what interested us. Um, so it's always been nice to have her support. And even if she doesn't understand what we're talking about, she'll read our papers and she'll nod along and pretend to know what's going on, um, which is always great. Um, I think also, um, silly really, but when I was growing up, I watched a lot of Star Trek and um, Captain Janeway was like the pinnacle, like when I was 13 and 14, which is like the defining age when you're like growing up and things matter like to see her being like a strong woman who was interested in science and maths and mechanics and nobody blinked an eye at that like mm -hmm. they saw her as the captain as the leader but she was also still feminine she was beautiful she was gentle she was like everything that i aspire to be and like having her as like a role model when i was like 13 and 14 like it was always really nice just to see that and to see it represented in like such a mainstream thing as star trek as well Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, go to the UKC Women's Campaign pages. And if you'd like to see similar content, check out KTV.